So today I wanted to do a get ready with me episode. I wanted to show you guys the process of me just putting on my makeup and getting ready for the day even though we're in quarantine and I'm really not going anywhere. I just feel like a big sense of my sanity is getting ready, getting dressed, just doing that makes me feel normal even though nothing is normal right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is put on my Lashify lashes. So I'm gonna be using this Whisper Light Bond, the fusing wand. And I also have this lash comb. It's a Tweezerman lash comb that I use for when I do my Lashify so that I can comb out any excess glue. And then I have my Lashify lashes, which are called Gossamers. They're brandy new. I just got these in the mail yesterday. I wouldn't call it a replacement for um, professional lash extensions, but I would definitely call it an upgrade from normal strip lashes. So it's like kind of in the middle of those two. So I feel like this lasts not as long as professional lash extensions, but definitely lasts or way longer than strip lashes because for me, these go about up to three days at most. Why am I having so much trouble opening this? Okay, there we go. These are the Lashify Lash Gossamers. These are shorter, C14s, and then these are the C16s. And I am going to be putting these on for you guys. First things first, when you're putting on Lashify, you want to use the adhesive to apply a little tiny bit of adhesive on the base of your natural lashes. So you don't want to mascara comb them all the way through. You just want them to be on the base. Here we go. So the mirror's not head on, it's like angled. So I can see underneath my lashes. So after dabbing a little bit of that on, see if see how it's just like the tiniest bit. I take my lash comb wherever it is. Where's my lash comb? I just had it. Oh, here it is. Durr. I take that and then I just kind of brush out any clumps and to just make sure there's not too much adhesive on there. So that was super simple. All you do is apply it to the base of your lashes, a light, light coat. And then now I'm going to take this fusing wand and I'm going to pick out the lashes that I'm going to be putting on and put them on for you guys. I'm going to start at the outer corner of my eye. I'm going longer on my outer corner. So these are the C16. And the thing about the Lashify lashes, they're super lightweight compared to like individual cluster lashes, let's say. And I place mine a little bit in from the corner of my eye because I find that if I put them all the way at the corner of my eye they um, come off easy. So it's really easy you just place it on the underneath on the underside of your natural lashes. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. So I'm going to go with two C16s on the ends because that's like super long. And then on the interiors, I'm going to grab my C14s, just a little shorter. I mean, this definitely takes longer than strip lashes, but I feel like they last longer and they're much more lightweight. Like I get as a contact lens wearer, I get quite a bit of irritation from strip lashes. So the Lashify for me is a nice in-between or upgrade from strip lashes. So I know there is a hack to this where if you just buy the adhesive, you can actually buy cheaper individual cluster lashes like from Ardell or Kiss and just use those. I find that the cluster lashes are a little heavier. So they're a little different from the cluster lashes, but the cluster lashes work. It also works if you use strip lashes and cut them up into little strips 
and just lay it under. I think like what you need the most is the adhesive and the wand. So after you do the one eye, you're gonna go in with the wand and they call this fusing, I think. It's firmly grip that so they adhere. That's one eye. I love that these are so lightweight compared to strip lashes, like, and they're just so much more comfortable to wear. So I'm gonna do the other eye. It's going this way. Use my lash comb to comb the adhesive through. And you would think like putting adhesive directly on your natural lashes that they'd rip out, but they actually don't, which is kind of interesting and miraculous, in my opinion. It must be very gentle adhesive. It's weird because it's a strong adhesive in that the lashes stick to them really well, but it's gentle in that they don't. it doesn't rip out your natural lashes when you remove these. So that's the both worlds a little bit. More C16s. Another C16. Thinking about actually going and getting shorter ones next time just because these are kind of extra long, extra dramatic, and I do want something a little bit more everyday at times. And like it's cool because the lash segments, it lets you mix it up, you know what I mean? I can go as short in whatever area I want and as long as I want in other areas. So you can like totally customize your look. And they have all different styles of lashes. I'm partial to the C's, which are the curl lashes, the curl customers. Last one. Now you go in and fuse. You want to grip it like right here so that you get a complete fuse. And then sometimes I go in and I'll, it's called reverse fusing, where you go in this way. Last step for the Lashify lashes this is glass coating. Feel the base where the spines of the gossamers are. And then I run a little bit over the lashes themselves. Give them a little shine. My lash of eyelashes. So lashes are done. Time to move on to the rest of my makeup. For base, this is what I've been using for a while now, is the J1 Red Jelly Pack. And this is going to be my primer. It's super hydrating. It grabs your makeup. It's one of those sticky primers that grips your makeup. And it has all these like good for you ingredients in it. So love this stuff. Take about three pumps. As you guys probably have noticed by now, I'm not a big like eye makeup person. I'm not a big dramatic makeup person. I see so many people doing amazing things with makeup and colors. And while I appreciate all of that and I find it very beautiful, I just, it's not for me. I'm very uncomfortable in that kind of makeup. I feel like the whole point of makeup is to make you feel beautiful, right? And I always feel like beauty and makeup is a very personal thing that you do for yourself. So I just stick to my natural little makeup looks. This is what I feel best in. So it's what I stick to. I am going to go in with this Pat McGrath foundation. It is in light medium 13, LM 13. 
And I am just going to squeeze a little bit. This foundation is actually so liquidy that I don't wet my beauty blender when I use it. I just use a dry beauty blender. Do a full pump. And I love this foundation because it's very light. It's light to medium coverage. It's not heavy. It's not cakey. It really mimics my natural skin really well, in my opinion. It has this slightly dewy satin finish. I'm gonna get, I want a little more coverage today because I am very red today. And my skin is very... I don't know, irritated at me. I always try to listen to my skin and what it means from day to day because every day is different. And I like to put some foundation on my lips because the lip look I'm doing later requires that my lip line be blurred out. And then I like to go in with a lighter shade of foundation to highlight like the high points of my face. So this is Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. It has niacinamide, squalene, and hyaluronic acid. This is also a very dewy finish. So what I like to do is do dewy all over and then whatever areas I need to kind of tone down and turn a little bit less shiny and less dewy, I go back with powder and accomplish that. The areas of my face that I like to apply this on. Right in my nose. High points of my cheeks, forehead, chin, cupid's bow, it's all running down my face. <laughs> I always say if you get a shade of foundation that's a little lighter or a little darker, you can use it for contour purposes. Like you can use the lighter face, lighter shades on the high points of your face, and you can use the darker shades on like the outer areas of your face to contour. Now I'm going to go in with concealer because I have a really bad breakout on my chin. I'm using this Hourglass, Hourglass 5 brush. It's a small, it's a really small concealer brush. This is Pat McGrath Labs concealer in LM13. Same shade as my foundation. Just put some on the back of my hand. Dab, dab. And I just put a heavy coat on like I kind of spackle this on because I'm gonna blend it out with another brush. I find that this style of concealer brush is great for coverage but not great for blending so I always use a secondary concealer brush to blend out. Like I like to make sure my skin is still showing like that it's still kind of natural. I feel like cake face is just not my thing. It makes me look older and mold enough as it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with this Hourglass. This is a angled concealer brush so it's flat on this end but then it's fluffy over here and it just does a really good job of blending out concealer. And I got this recently at the Sephora Spring VIB sale. I was looking for a concealer brush just like this and Hourglass does so well on their brushes. I really love Hourglass brushes. I literally used my large Hourglass powder brush for about seven years before it snapped on me. <laughs> the handle snapped on me, but it took seven years. Like I, I had that con I had that powder brush for a really long time. And Hourglass's brushes are always like super soft. If it matters to you, they're like vegan as well, which doesn't matter to me but it matters to a lot of people. Now see how dewy shiny my skin looks? It's time to tone down the shininess in certain areas. So I have this Pat McGrath Light Medium to Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder. And what I really like about this is the dispenser is like mesh if you can tell. It's not like plastic so it kind of dispenses the powder nice and evenly. Dump a little bit into the lid, and I'm going to take this Shiseido Kabuki type brush. 
This brush is really soft. I also got this during the Sephora VIB sale. I just did an overhaul of my brushes recently because I wasn't happy with the way all of them were performing. My forehead to look too greasy. Under my eye. I like to leave my cheeks dewy. This brush does like a really good job of buffing, but for some reason I find myself using it more for pressing. The key to my makeup looks is fine layers. Like I'd rather do multiple fine layers than one thick heavy layer. Did a really small fine layer at first. To the sides of my nose. I'm gonna do my eyebrows. And eyebrows are such a huge deal because they frame your face, they make or break the look. If you have bad brows, it just kind of makes everything look worse. I uh, recently ran out of my brow pencil. I've been using this Fenty Beauty eyebrow pencil and it's like gone. It's like done. It's pretty much that's done. But I got this Makeup Forever Aqua XL color paint as a Sephora like 100 point perk and I've been using that for my uh, eyebrows. So I just use this, I'm pretty sure this is an Anastasia brow brush and I'm going to use that to create my brows. Get some of this to dispense. Just a little bit. And this is supposed to be like color, uh, waterproof paint and all this stuff. And you know, who doesn't love a long lasting brow, especially in the summer? They wipe off so easily with sweat. So lately I found a new eyebrow shape that I love, love, love. I usually used to do like very angular, kind of thinner brows, but now I'm going for a more straight, thicker brow. And that's like much more in the Korean style of um, eye makeup. So see how my natural brows are really angular and like thin? I barely have eyebrow hair, it's the worst. So I'm gonna draw my outline first. And the key too is to not take the brow too far out. You want it to stay kind of in bounds. So basically where my arch is, I'm filling in that area. So I'm kind of actually flattening out my arch purposefully. See how much straighter this is than my natural brow, which is way thinner and angular. And this waterproof paint stuff from Makeup Forever is very buildable, so you can do like one layer. And then once it dries down, you can go back with another layer, create an extra layer of color, make it more opaque. Yeah, but basically I'm trying to not totally get rid of my arch, but soften the arch a bit. I noticed that thinner brows and more angular arches make you look older and more wicked. And they make you look kind of mean. And as with brows, they can never be perfectly symmetrical, so if they are cousins, I'm happy. They don't have to be identical twins. As long as they're in the same family and I can live with that. Am I all the way happy with them? Not exactly. And I'm gonna go back my Fenty eyebrow brush or eyebrow pencil. It has like this little comb on the end, which I really love. So while the pencil is gone, the comb still has a purpose to serve. Just go back and soften my eyebrows a bit. Okay. 
They're giving me cousins. They're kind of, they're not second cousins. I think they're first cousins. So I'll, I can live with it. But yeah, I definitely need to get a new brow product because I am all out. That concealer brush I had. This is the Pat McGrath um, un Blurring Under Eye Powder. And I like to just take a little bit of that and stamp it onto my brows. Make them last a little longer, also soften them. While my skin looks really flawless right now, my brows are in place, I, I need some color on my face. So my favorite thing is this Peri Para Peri's Tint. I believe this is the strawberry shade. This is a Korean beauty brand. I'm gonna start with my lip. This is just like a little dough sponge applicator. And I'm doing a little bit of a bitten lip today, bitten gradient lip. So we're just focusing this in the middle of my lips, like, and nowhere else. See that? It just creates this kind of color wash, gradient color wash, and I love it. This is like a very K-beauty look. Apparently the gradient lip is a little out of trend now in Korea, but I love it. YSL Tattooage Couture Matte Stain. So this is another stain and just to add that extra pop. I put a little bit of this in the middle. It's a bright, bright red. Looks like a geisha lip right now. And I just blend that. And the key is to not take it all the way to your lip line. Keep it in the center. I like to go back and make it even more of a contrast by taking a little bit of this concealer that's on the back of my hand. It's just like leftover, so I just need a little tiny bit. And then blurring my lip line, actually. See? A bitten lip. I uh, take that peri para tint. This is supposed to be a lip tint, but I use it wherever. And I apply it to my fingers first. Then I go back into my cheeks. And I just pat that on. I like to try to keep the blush on the upper half of the apple. not too far down. And this is like a very long lasting tint. This will last all day long. To my other cheek. And like with the blush, the tint blush, it's okay if you feel like you overdid it because you can always go back with more foundation and just kind of soften it and make it a little bit less Dramatical. My left cheek is darker than my right cheek. So I'm going to go back with this blender. That's it. That's my face. I know it doesn't look all the way done to a lot of people. I feel like people are like, where's your eyeshadow? Where's your eyeliner? Where's your, you know. Um, the only thing I would add to this, if anything, is some highlight. I'm not going to, but if I were to, that's what I would add. that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for getting ready with me and watching. Um, please subscribe, like, watch my videos, loop my videos, put them on a playlist, do all that stuff. I'm super close to monetizing, which I'm super excited about. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me guys, and I will talk to you guys later.